Good morning. Hello, hello, hello. How are we all? Oh, there's a couple of people tuning in. Good morning, Julianne. Good morning, Carolyn. How are we this morning, guys? I hope you're feeling better than me. It's, it's afternoon. There's my first problem. Not morning. Um, morning, Jenny. Morning. My God, start saying afternoon. Okay. <laughs> hey, Bron, how are you? Uh, so, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining in this afternoon. Uh, for those of you who are just tuning in or my regular viewers, I guess, normally I would do a... <laughs> Um, a morning session and an afternoon session, but it's Saturday. I've got nowhere to be. I had a bit of a ordinary night last night. Well, ordinary morning, I should say. Um, I had a great night last night. It's my mum's 70th birthday. Um, am I okay? Yes, I am. The head's a little bit cloudy, but, um... I have got some Gatorade here. I am rehydrating and getting ready to um, start my day a little late, but um, start my day just the same. So um, I am today doing some, some demos with Distress Oxides. And this, well, t this one today, I'm gonna do some easy cards and stencils nothing super fancy uh, and then this afternoon at 4 30 Adelaide time I'm going to do a scrapbook layout and I might use some foam stamps with distress oxides as well so I thought good morning Sandra um, I thought that that would be the case. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, um, everything going to plan. I might jump back on tonight and do a bit of a arty journal page and show you, you know, I don't know, just have a bit of a bit of a play. So um, as part, yes, I did have a bit of a drink last night. Actually, Bron, I had a big, big drink last night. Hence, I'm a bit, bit cloudy and the eyes are a little fuzzy. Um, but hey... I'm human, so happy days. So what we are going to do today as part of the Great Australian Craft Show is um, I'm going to talk about Distress Oxides and show you some simple techniques on how to best use them um, and show you how easy they are to use with stencils and masks. Um, the Distress Oxides are my deal of the day. So from... 5.30 this morning through to whenever I go to bed tonight, they will be on special for 15% off. So that comes down to $8.93 per pad, which is pretty damn good. Um, the other specials I have online this weekend are 15% off stamps and stencils, 15% off scrapbooking papers and card making papers of all sizes, and 15% off Lindy's Gang products. So I'll be doing a little demo with those a little bit later, probably tomorrow. Um, so yeah, plenty of specials online. Um, and tomorrow I'll be doing also uh, two live Facebooks as well, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. So um, the... Other thing that you need to know before I start is if you have already placed an order with me over the weekend and paid for postage, fantastic, thank you. But you also have the option of adding to your order. So if you want to take advantage of today's special but you did an order on Thursday, then you can add to your car or add to your order by um, selecting no judgment when you get to the checkout. Uh, put your order through. It just means that I won't, you know, you don't have to pay postage twice. All right, enough waffling on from me. This is the brand, spring, brand spanking new um, Distress Oxide Crackling Campfire. I've just opened it, haven't used it myself yet, so I'm going to play with this today. So they are available online. 
I've also got the previous colour available that was released a month and a half ago, Speckled Egg. And I have the refills for those and the Distress Glaze available as well at the moment. The new Crackling Campfire is only available at the moment in the Distress Oxide. Uh, the rest of the stuff is still on order and is uh, I'm pretty sure it's coming in next week. But you're going to want to need to be quick because there's not all that many left on the shelf. Okay, so I have got here some plain cardstock, plain white cardstock. So this is, um, as per normal, what I make my cards out of and I cut them in half down to six by fours. I then will take... Uh, I will take these guys once I've created something and uh, then stick it to the front of a folded card. That is my standard technique for card making. Um, the other thing I have here in front of me is these guys here. So here are some tools that we're going to be using to create the cards. Um, so I'm going to be working about here. So for those of you who are watching on a mobile device or an iPad, if you have the comments across the bottom of your screen from about here down, you can just swipe those across and they will disappear. So then you can see everything here in front. Um, all right, so what I have here are the Paper Rose blending tools. Uh, I've got these available, a two pack for $15. So I'll be using these guys today. I also have the normal blending tools, the round blending tools, I'm going to be using those and I'm going to be using these little tiny baby mini ones. So here's an idea on size, on how big they are. Um, all right, so let's create some simple backgrounds first of all. The other thing I have handy is some post-it notes. The reason I have post-it notes handy is, sorry, just reorganising my chair. The reason I have post-it notes handy is because I don't want to get gross fingers. Uh, gross isn't the word. Uh, ink transfer on my fingers and make them all inky. So let's go. Oh, God, Natalie, get it together. Hang on. Here we go. Sorry, guys. Um, let's go straight in with the Crackling Campfire, this brand new color. So a couple of things that you can do. You can go ink pad straight to the paper. Um, you can use your blending tool if you want to, or you can use your sponge. So I'm going to use all three to show you how it works with all of them. So these lovely little blending tools, the first thing I do is grab a baby wipe and make sure it's clean because I'm super lazy at putting things away when they are dirty. Okay, nice juicy amount of color on there. Oh, that's nice and I can blend my color on. So I'm just working in a round circular motion, going backwards and forwards and making sure I get a really, really nice blend. So I'm working on my Tim Holtz glass mat and I'm working on my glass mat because it gives me a nice surface to work on there. You could also use one of the heat proof mats which i have have available online for eleven dollars um as well so but i really love these i think these are really nice and easy to use and they are really really soft so that is the ink transfer with the new crackling campfire and the brush so you can see i've got a nice even coat there um now I will use the blending tool. So this one, as you can see, it's already got orange on it from something else. So I'm just gonna wipe that off nice, take off any excess on a baby wipe. This is where the um, paper, the post-it note comes into play. So I'm going to ink that up. And Oh, that's nice with that too. I have to say at the moment, using the um, the blending brush is, is my favorite way of doing it. I find that I actually personally get a, a much better coverage, a better coat than I do with these guys, but it depends on the project that I'm using, um, using it for. So same thing again, small little circles to go around the page. 
Um, and you can see that that gave a really nice coat on that side. But the difference is I've got these little lines here, but I haven't blended them together. So that is the new Crackling Campfire Tim Holtz color. I like it. Um, the other thing that I can do is I can take my pad straight to the paper. And while that's wet, I can move that around. And I've now filled in that gap and pop that aside to dry. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna pop that aside to dry and I can come back and add more to that later on. Um, alrighty, so I think now I might have a bit of a play with just creating some simple blended backgrounds. So the next one I wanna do is back to some more cardstock. Um, well, since I've got this color out, let's mix it with something else. So do the same thing again. I like to go right off the edge. Nine times out of 10, you'll see me start off the glass and then move the ink onto the cardstock. Um, I do like a lovely solid color as well. I'm one of these people who, who prefers something deeper and brighter rather than something that is a little bit more washed out. Um, the next color I've got here is fossilized amber. So another tool, check it, make sure it's clean on my baby wipe. And you can see here, I've got a bit of an ink splurt because I've got it on my fingers. So that's okay. So the trick when you're doing something like this is to choose colors that are going to work really nice together. So colors that are alongside each other on the color wheel are always going to, to look nicer. So orange, yellow, red, pink, all of those colors are alongside each other on the color wheel. So when you blend them together, they're not going to muddy up. If I was to use orange and then a green, when you mix orange and green together, you get brown. You do not get something that is as visually pleasing, something that is as attractive on the eye. Yellow is that lovely middle color that works quite well with everything. So the color that I put on next, I can put a green here, I can put a blue here. Um, I would not put a purple because a purple mixed with yellow, they're opposite on the color wheel. So I want to make sure that um, I don't make mud. So fossilized amber next. And I didn't get all my colors out, I only got a few, but uh, what have I got here? I might actually pop a brown down there, actually. Let's go with vintage photo. I'm gonna grab another blending brush. Now I don't, have to um, get a different blending brush every time I use it. I can actually just wipe it with a baby wipe, um, but I'm lazy, so i am just grabbed another one. All right, so this has just been re-inked, so I know it's gonna be a little on the darker side. The other cool thing about um, the oxides is they, they do work better when they are nice and juicy. So what that means for you is if when you purchase them, you see that there is a reinker available, I would highly recommend investing in a reinker straight up because I do like to make sure that they are, they're designed to be nice and juicy. They're not supposed to be um, a dry ink pad. So um, blending my yellow and my brown together, I'm just, lightly overlapping like that. So where I've just done that big splurge there, I'm going to need to work that into the paper. And I can come back and layer over the top. So now I'm just being lazy and I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna blend that straight in to get a nice intense color and pull that across. So there's no reason why I can't do that as well. Um, if you don't like it, put it aside to dry and see what happens. 
um, I find that if I come back to it when the ink has dried and given it a few minutes, put fresh eyes on it, the, the colours have kind of settled down a little and I can go back over the top and add some more. So what I'm going to do at the moment is I'm going to work on blending this line here with some more fossilised amber. And my fossilised amber could definitely be a little bit more inky. So what I do love about these is they've got that opaqueness to them. And I think that is my favourite thing to do with these is, is colour like this and then allow them to dry and stencil and stamp over the top. Um, so I want to do the same thing again. I want to blend a little bit more here. And I could also go this way, taking my um, crackling campfire over the top. So I've got something here. I've got that bit of a sort of sunset sort of look and that's worked out quite well. Um, I know that this is just my background. It is not my finished card. So I'm going to pop that aside to dry. Wipe down my glass so that I have another nice clean space to work with. Um, okay, so let's get out and clean my fingers each time as well. I do go through a couple of baby wipes during this process. Um, but yes, I do make sure that I don't get any extra transfer. Um, I'm going to now use speckled egg. And I'm going to this time do it with a blending tool. Hang on a minute. Where's a blending tool with a cleanish sponge? So I like that all my sponges, I tend to wash them straight away or dump them in a, in a jar of water. Um, and then you can use them again and again and again. I, I do love that purpose, um, that, that reusing sort of tool thing there I think it works but I can also use in the past I've got a velcro dot and used a velcro dot to stick the color on the back so that I know that the matching sponge is there so there's another little free tip for you so this one is speckled egg speckled egg is gorgeous it is the color that Tim bought out a little earlier um, or a couple of months ago I think so I'm going to use speckled egg and I've got bundled sage on the other side so bundled sage is a lovely pale green um, and I'm going to use the same sponge but I'm just going to take my excess blue off with a baby wipe ink it up Oh, that's a nice colour. I'd forgotten how... No I'm, I'm such a sucker for going for the super bright colours straight up. Um, absolute sucker for doing that every time. But uh, I forget how nice these colours here look. They work a, a treat. Um, I'm now going to go back with my speckled egg and just work on this line here a bit blend over tie them together a little bit more so now i've got speckled egg and bundled sage right next so if i was just to put bundled sage straight on like so i can do that and i would tend to just soften it up take the lines off that's the cheats way of doing it also very effective um, there's no reason why you have to use a blending tool look at that that worked and you just have to work at blending those lines just a little bit better in the middle so you don't get those strokes beautiful all 
okay making a nice little pile here next to me okay so I have created four backgrounds um, I might just do one more I might use cracked pistachio and chip sapphire this time drink break anybody watching I can't see anyone oh hi I haven't turned my comments on that might be the problem all right Tina has just asked the question I only have oxide refills can I still blend them by placing the ink on the mat and picking them up with the tool I need to try do you want me to try I'll just just chat amongst yourselves for a second while I go and grab a refill So, let's go for colours that I don't have here. Blueprint, Sketch and Wilted Violet. So, can we blend using just the refills? Haven't done this in ages. How bad can it go, right? Um, first thing you need to do is give them a really good shake. So you've got all of the um, pigments sitting in the bottom here, so you need to shake them up. Alrighty. So I will use the, um, the brush tool. Now this, as you can see, is going to be a lot more wet. It's quite a puddle, but it's working. But it's also, um, my brush is soaking up a lot more color as well. I'm gonna also add in some picture raspberry, just for shits and giggles, as we like to say. But yeah, it is, it's super wet, super duper wet, um, and certainly not as soft, but yeah, it's working. So let's work on the blending now. So now I've got it looking quite blotchy and unblended, whoops. like that but what I do need to do is might just clean off my sponge a bit work on blending these lines so with the colors that I have used of course when they all work together they can become one color so I'm being very uh, light with my sponge and my tool is actually a little bit too, it's, it's really soaked in all of that ink. So I need to watch what's going on with that. And now putting on some of the um, refill in the pink. Like I said, I haven't done this in ages. I have no idea how it's going to work. So um, be prepared to possibly watch me fail. But again, hello being human, and I don't love that. But I might just let that dry and come back to it, or maybe it just needs some purple. Or maybe I need a clean brush, let's do that. Not that one, that's not clean. All right, so I need an assistant to come and clean brushes for me in between. Is anybody available? All 
All right, so the purples are a little bit better to work with. So yes, it will work, but you do get a different sort of effect. It's a lot more saturated. Um, it is a lot more intense. So it's also my color choices. If I put it straight on the card, will it work? Yeah, but it's a lot more intense and a lot wetter. So um, it'll work. And it's still a background. It's still a viable background that I can then use for creating... Um, the card fronts, which is what I'm doing, because I'm going to be stenciling over the top of some of these in a moment. So um, let me get that out of the way. Clean off my work surface. So um, for those of you who have just tuned in, um, we're just playing with some Distress Oxides, creating some easy backgrounds and having a bit of a play with stencils and the item of the day, which is the Distress... Oh, sorry, the Daily Deal, which is the... Um, the Distress Inks. So I'm just quickly going to clean my brushes before I do anything else um, and have a bit of a read of these comments while I am doing this. Um, so I've currently got stencils on special as well at 15% off. So what that means for you is that is Paper Rose Stencils. Stencil Girl as well. Um, they are 15% off. There was a little bit of a hiccup online uh, over the last couple of days, which has been fixed. Um, but they are all 15% off at present. So that's actually quite good value for money for you guys. And you will only get that this weekend with that special online, nataliemay.com.au. So let's use some stencils now to do some blending through some stencils onto the plain white cardstock. I have got here in front of me some a, a range of stencils. I've got these paper rose ones. So I'll do some blending with that. Um, in a moment, I've got some stencil girl stencils as well and a, a mask to play with. I have some of the stencils that I have designed, the Natalie May scrapbooking ones. I'll have a bit of a play with those. Um, and so these are all the six by six size and I actually went and got off the shelf some of the new paper rose ones as well I love this and I think that one is bloody awesome that one is called triangle weave um, and that is amazing half tone hearts and the small drops so um, I don't think I'll open those uh, and then I've got some of these big big stencil girl ones these ones here i'm going to show you how to use these are the artist trading card stencils where they've got these little images on them so i'll be having a play with those um and all right so let's start with this one here since i've got it in front there we go so this is called the crazy quilts um as you can see it's covered in paint but that's okay and I'm going to use it like that. So I'm going to get lots of different areas there. So let's go with festive berries. And aged mahogany. So I've got two colours that are similar. So that I know that I'll get something that is visually pleasing. Um, I'm going to start with the lightest colour. Just because I know that the lightest colour is going to look the nicest. And I'm just going to lightly sponge or use my um, paper rose blending brush to go over the top. So going in between each colour, same brush. And layering those colours. And I'm just going to push it like that over that um, picked raspberry, okay? so that it feathers a little rather than being a, a solid block colour. So I'm making sure that my hand is holding down the stencil and the paper. I could have used a, a double-sided tape or a washi tape to secure the stencil and the, um, the paper but that would have involved finding another thing to put on my desk here and make happen today. And you know what? 
it's okay. I don't have to do that today. So I have covered all my surface and let's, li lift, let's lift that off and have a look. Yeah, that works. Quick, easy background. Done. Tick. So here's the other thing. This stencil now is completely covered in Distress Oxide. So what I want to do is use it as a stamp. So I will give it a light spray, and I'm just gonna do that off camera. So I've just got um, a water spray bottle, and I've just given it three pumps of water. Drop that down, and now I'm just going to give it a little bit of pressure. And I suspect that I didn't actually use enough water. Let's find out. No, I didn't, okay, bugger. Hey, Carrie ann So let's give it another spray and see how arsy I can be by lining that up. What are the chances, people? Today, close enough. Again, a bit more pressure. So I'm utilizing that ink. Hey, that's a bit better. And now I have a stamped stencil image, something else that's really unique and then just wiping off that excess. All right, let's crack into another one quickly. Um, I've got this Stencil Girl Little Painted Rainbows. So I, this time, am going to grab my card. And I'm actually going to tape it all down a little bit. So I have got a roll of, I've got a roll of um, post-it note paper. Oh, for goodness sakes. That I've lost the end of. So, oh, bugger it, stuff it. Let's just go with that. So I'm going to, first of all, stick down my paper. And then I'm gonna stick down my stencil. Oh, see, now it wants to work. God, line that up. Just so it holds it in place. So this is where these little blending um, tools will come in handy. So what colors do we wanna use for this? Let's just start with this, I'm not gonna worry about the rainbow I'm just gonna make the colors all pretty oh so inky so nice so when you're doing something like this I want to follow the direction of the stencil I don't want to work across or work against the grain of it I don't want to make it buckle at all oh that's so nice because it's so nice and creamy and easy to use um, baby wipe Take a little bit of excess ink off. Um, I want to now use a, I did have an orange here. There it is. Ripe persimmon. And I want to do this one here. And I might pop that in there as well because the shape of this stencil is looking pretty nice. Um, and then I want to grab another one. I want to do a yellow, so I can't use yellow with this guy here. So I'm going to take off the little pad, pop a clean one on. And I have got squeezed lemonade. Spend half the time changing the pads over, I swear. Oh no, and it's come loose. Okay. So I'm gonna do this one and then I'm gonna stencil a couple more and then put these cards together just to show you 
how to finish them off. I mean, I could sit and do this all day, but I'm sure you guys have got like a million and 12 other things that you can be doing. Um, and I'm not coordinating myself today as well as I possibly could. <sighs> but we can thank wine for that. All right, so now I've got picked raspberry and I'm gonna go in with picked raspberry. And I like that these little sponges allow me to get into these little details. All right, that works for me. Oh, happy days, check it out. Yep, that works. Pop it aside, move on. Don't over procrastinate, over, over fuss about it. There's no point to doing that at all, um, in my opinion. So now if I decide to use, um, say, this stencil here, which is a little bit more fine, and do a, a background like this. This stencil, I do believe, is called Hamilton. And I really like this one. I love this pattern. I think that this pattern is super universal and very, very clever for um, masculine cards. Um, so I'm going to use speckled egg, old paper, and perhaps weathered wood for this. Um, and I've lost my lid, but that's okay. We can come back to that. Oh, good morning, Fiona. Afternoon, Fiona. How are you, honey? All right, old paper. So this is one of those underestimated colors. Um, and I'm just gonna start with a really, really light blend. I don't want to work at it too much because I don't want the um, stencil to move around too much. And I don't want it to lift because it is quite fine. Right, happy with that. Happy with that. So now we're going to go in with some weathered wood. Weathered wood and speckled egg do look very similar, as do iced spruce as well. So they are colours that, yeah, although they look similar, when you use them... Oh, I love that. When you use them, they blend really, really nicely. They are different colours. So I'm overlapping onto those other colours there. Oh, and out comes the dirty sponge. Let's put that down. No, I won't. I'll just use it. Commit to it. Commit to it, you say. Cover it up. Okay. Speckled egg, my friend. You know, I quite often get, I'll like finish these live Facebooks and then I'll sit here for a couple of minutes and go, what the hell have I just talked about for the last hour? How is it that you guys are still listening to me waffling on about... I don't know what the hell I'm freaking on about half the time, but um, full credit to you guys for still coming back and tuning in, FYI. Hi, Larissa. I see you watching from New Zealand. How is life over there? I'm gonna come back in with some more bundled sage and I'm gonna overlap onto those colors. And then old paper again, just to finish off. So they don't just look like big brown spots and it's a little bit more blended. And there is your wow factor. So three very 
four very underestimated colors in the Distress Oxides. Look bloody awesome. Um, okay, so here we go with, again, I've got a dirty um, stencil, but I'm just going to dirty it up a little bit more. And I'll show you what you can do by doing this. So let's get a bit of chip sapphire on it as well. Yeah, the stencil is, this is a stencil girl stencil and it is the one called Hamilton. Um, really, really nice and easy to use. Um, super versatile, looks amazing when you spray over it as well. Um, what the hell happened to my lid? Totally lost it, all right. So now I'm just gonna give that a light spray with water and turn this into a stamp, give it some pressure. And now my stencil has turned into a stamp. Very, very cool, very easy to use. Wipe up your space and we are good to go. So. The other really awesome thing is, is some of these backgrounds that I created earlier. So this is the one of the ones from before. I want to stencil some images over the top of that. So I can take, let's take one of these guys here. I've got these little love hearts. Um, so this is what's called an artist trading card stencil and you can cut them up. So, or you can use them like this. So this one here is the design by Seth Apter and I can use it like that or I can use it like that. And they are the perfect size for artist trading cards. Um, I'm actually gonna use a bigger one. Here we go. Let's go with this beautiful one instead. And I'm gonna pop that over the top. And what color shall I do this with? I need something that's gonna go oomph something that's going to go, I found the yellow lid, um, something with a bit of pow. So how about a bit of aged mahogany? And I'm going to use my sponge, sorry, my brush for this one. And I love that they just layer over the top. I could have done the green leaves really easily. But I'm too lazy. Can you spray the mess on your mat and smooch your cardstock so you don't waste your ink on paper towel? Is the question being asked in the comments? Absolutely. freaking lootly um, You certainly can do that. I love that. That's quick and easy stencil over the top. Um, yeah, I can. There's there's a million a million tricks that you can do with distress oxides. So many techniques. There is absolutely no reason why you can't try all of them. I just decided today to keep it simple. Just show you a couple of techniques. Otherwise, we are going to be here for hours and hours and hours on end. And I'm pretty sure that you just don't want to sit through that. Um, all right, let's pop the lid on this one. And I'm going to use my branching out stencil and weathered, no, hickory smoke, which is this lovely gray to pop some leaves on. I'm gonna do some little ones to start with. Oh, I like it. So I might also put in one of the lighter colors over the top to show you how that looks. So this is one of the stencils that I've designed and these stencils, this particular one also comes with a mark, like the four masks. So the four punch out bits. So this is a good value for money. Um, the Natalie, sorry, Natalie May products, the stamps and stencils, are not on special this weekend. Um, they are already at the lowest possible price that I can give them to you. Um, so there are no further discounts. Um, but you totally need them. 
I'm telling you that you need them. Buy them. They're wonderful. Um, okay, so back with the hickory smoke. Um, the other thing is, is you can also go online to the Ranger website or the blog. I can't remember which one it is. Um, and you can print out the little stickers. See how I've got the little stickers with the name on it? You can print those out to put on the edge so that when they're sitting on your desk, you can see what you've got. I don't believe they've got the new colours added just yet. All right, we're on the right track here. Last one. All right. So they layer up really quite nicely over the top. Nice and subtle as well, which is which is really nice. Um, all right, I'm gonna pop that aside, pop that aside. Where's one of my other ones that I did? All right, here's this hot mess that I made earlier with the straight, straight, um, what do you call it? that refills straight onto it. So I'm gonna use a, a mask this time and I'll use a sponge instead just to show you that it can work with a sponge. Uh, what color should we go with? I've got all the colors here in front of me. We'll go dark, let's pop a chipped sapphire on it. So I'm just using it, round circles, Nice re-ink every time so that I've got a nice coat of ink. Now, because this has got big gaps in this stencil, what's happening, of course, is it is changing the colour of the background, leaving those marks. And I've got a few little areas up here which I have to be a little bit more close, a little bit more detailed with, a little bit more gentle. Now, hey. Hey, that's, that's turned out pretty great. Beauty, let's pop that aside. I can use that. Um, spray some water, let's do it. Another bit of cardstock. I've got a box of this, this sort of stuff sitting um, in my cupboard that they're the instant card fronts. They're just, if I need to do a quick little thank you note, if I need to do something really quickly, I can. Um, I can I can grab it and turn it into a card. So um, really handy to have those things floating around. Um, alrighty, done that one, done that one. What else have I got sitting here that I can work with? Um, I wanna stamp over the top of this one here. So. If I want to stamp, let's go with my, let's go with this one here. So this is one of my stamps that I've designed and this is the um, Life is Better set. So my stamps are red rubber and they come on a solid red rubber and you will need to cut around them. So when I cut around them, I go in super tight to the image. Um, what colour is the next question? I think that I might go with weathered wood. I like this weathered wood colour at the moment. And I'm going to give it a nice juicy ink. And I'm going to apply the ink to the stamp. So something else about this is because it's got a line on it, you need to make sure that you are stamping off the page so that it's not floating in the middle. It needs to be grounded. And that's looking pretty nice. I like it. Um, clean your stamp. Done. Okay, so that's looking really quite lovely on there. So I have created one, two, I've done this one, which is a little different. 
We've got that one there. We've got the stamped one. We have got the rainbow. We have got that one there. Oh, I didn't do this one. Let's stencil over the top of this one and then I'll put some sentiments on them and finish up. What am I gonna do here? Uh, check a plate, check a plate. Actually, what color would have been awesome is um, the black soot. That would have been about perfect about now. So this is a paper rose stencil, this checker plate. Um, and I'm just gonna go over the top in the same colors that I've used before. Let's have a look at that. What happens? Yep, it's added a little bit of color over the top and I'm now going to put that over the yellow. Like so. And put it over the brown now. And just got a nice simple background there so I could build on this so I could build on this now with um, all sorts of things from um, you know embellishments over the top I could put flowers over the top I could put little mini cars over the top I could st I can continue to stencil over it um, I'm, I'm limited I'm not at all there's no limitations to what we can do it's just you just get in and do it um, okie dokie so let's go and turn these into some actual cards rather than little pieces um, still got plenty of I've got nowhere to be I guess I'm just um, fluffing around Trevor's doing jobs hanging washing on the line changing the water in the fish tank if I go in there I'll have to go and do something productive um, or go and do some grocery shopping because there is no food in the house um, because it's the first world problems on this Saturday. And I'm just gonna pop this paper towel down just so to take that bit of glare, that circle of light off there for you that you don't really need to see while I turn these into some card fronts. Um, let's have a look. Let's start with, let's start with the rainbow one. So here's this, this lovely little rainbow. So that's from that stencil where I use the little mini tool. And what I'm going to do is I have pre-stamped some of the sentiments that I have on my personal stamp set. Um, so these are stamps that I have designed that I, I always wanted to have available to me. That is why I have designed these guys. So um, you are my rainbow on a cloudy day, says it all. Now, yes, I probably should be using a paper trimmer but my paper trimmer is buried under a pile of stencils. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna wing it. And when I create cards, it's not necessarily about, you know, everything being thrown onto the page. What I would tend to do here with this particular card, um, I can blend these little lines in with a paintbrush, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use a pen. So I've got one of my drawing pens and I don't know if this is one that's run out of ink. No, we're all good. So this is the um, Pilot drawing pen and I will create a, a black frame. And this is the one that I have used to running out point, but that's okay, let's commit to it. And I do not mind that it is a wonky line. A wonky line is fine. It takes the focus away from paper not being cut straight or um, something on your page or your project that's not perfect. It 
will work just fine. I am not a perfectionist, I am a creative. Um, and there is, in my eyes, that's what matters to me. Um, foam tape. I've got some 12 mil foam tape here and I'm just going to do that. Do that. Do that. So where do I stick this? I can stick it here, here, up top, up top. And that works for me. Simple, effective, great for a um, small person, for a small birthday. Um, lots of things. Um, hey there, Julie. Just noticed there's a few more people tuning in, so I'm just going to pop that one aside. What is next? I need to put that pen aside so I don't use it again. Let's find another one. How's this one working? No, oh, okay, so apparently all of mine are looking a little bit well used we will call that at the moment here we go here's another pilot pen we'll use that one sorry drink break all right so this one here this is the one that we did with the speckled egg and what did we use we used bundled sage at the top and blended those together with one of my stamps on it um i'll do exactly the same thing again and Where's my paper trimmer? Here. One thing I like to do is I will create a bit of a, um, cut a little off the top and cut a little off the sides so that it sits on a white frame and has a white edge on it. This one will have a really lovely little white edge on it. Um, hey, Susie. Uh, yeah, so I will, oh gosh. Series just turned on because I said, hey, Susie. <laughs> and I did it on my phone too. Sorry if you cut out then. How funny is that? Um, okay, so again, I want to do a bit of a frame on this one because my, my stamped image here needs to be grounded. And I also need to create a black frame because my stamping is black. So if it doesn't have a black frame around it, then it just won't look balanced. There we go, like that, like that. Turning my paper and my hand movement just going up and down, it's all about that little bit of creativity. Um, Radio, bit of double-sided tape. Wonder where that is, here we go. And I'm gonna do that and that. Um, so while I'm doing this, um, yeah, just a reminder, the sale finishes tomorrow evening. Um, at six o'clock tomorrow, I'm going to stop with the bundling of postage. So if you decide that you want to bundle order, I have to start packing orders. Um, and if you decide that you would like to bundle up to take advantage of the postage, Keep an eye out on Facebook because I will be putting a notification up to say bundled orders stop at, you know, at, and naming a time, whether it's six o'clock, whether or not I, I go a little bit earlier, haven't quite decided yet. Um, but yes, that, that's going to happen tomorrow. Um, but the cool thing, like I said, you know, looking after you guys, so you don't have to pay postage more than once if you want to add to your order. You just need to select, put another order through and select no judgment at the checkout. Um, and then it is a, a one cent postage rather than paying a full, um, a full $12.50 again. So my lovely sister is coming in on Monday and we are going to be packing orders. They will all hopefully go out Monday afternoon, if not Tuesday morning. Um, so hopefully you will have your order by the end of the week. And 
everybody is happy days. Um, all right, so this little sentiment is in my stamp sets. One of my faves. Positive energy is everything. Done. Okay. Card number two. See the difference that white frame makes and this black border here blends in with that black stamping. Card number two. Holy shit, this is just a massive mess here. This is disgusting. All right, let's do something with this one. So with this one here, I want to... I don't really want to do too much to it, to be honest. I might just draw my black frame around it. And I love the way that this is dried up. I love the way that the um, hickory smoke and the... What else did I use? Speckled egg have got that difference of colour. That works really nicely on there. No, it wasn't speckled egg, it was weathered wood. Um, so today the Distress Oxides are 15% off and the ink refills are also 15% off. So make the most of it and utilise that because it takes them down to about $8 something instead of $10.50 each so um, definitely a bargain there what have we got here good things come to those who hustle make shit happen work hard stay humble she had art on her mind um, it's a good day to be happy I say so let's use this one So I have just stamped these in black archival ink using an acrylic block. Um, I also have in stock some of the stamp press um, stamp stamping platforms as well. So um, they are, if you do a lot of stamping, a good addition to your crafting tools. Um, I use one a lot. Uh, the only time I generally don't use them is when I... I have, um, sorry, concentrating. Um, the only time I generally don't do it is when I'm putting lots of sentiments on a, on a page like this. So other than that, um, and I've, I've only just recently been converted to the stamping platform. I did actually think that I didn't need one because it was, I just thought it'd be another one of those overpriced tools that I didn't need, but I absolutely love it. Simple, effective. That will sit nicely on a on a white border as well to lift it up. So I will do that off camera um, shortly. Uh, what else have we got here? And I will finish off with doing this one and then just get out of your hair because I've been waffling on here for an hour. Um, so this is the one with the stenciling over the top. In the blue and the background is super deep because we use the ink refills instead of the brush. Um, Suzanne, what are you asking there, love? Sorry. Is tumble glass a nice colour? Um, tumble glass is that one that I just used. Yes, it is that lovely... Um, like it's no actually no I didn't use it sorry I was thinking speckled egg tumble glass is beautiful in a in a blue so look your best bet if you're unsure of what colors to get jump online and google search the colors um as much as I would love to say yep come over and try them all um that's not going to happen at the moment I have uh the studio is a hot freaking mess um and it is a um, it's, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not in a position to be able to have people come to the studio, but choose colours that appeal to you. What do you think is going to work together when you're choosing colours? If you want, if you make more masculine projects, then yeah, you're going to want blues and greys and browns. If you are wanting more, if you create more feminine projects, then of course you want to go with pinks and oranges and reds and this beautiful new crackling campfire. Um, 
vintage colors are fantastic you can easily choose um, vintage photo old paper some of those like weathered wood for those as well you could quite easily go with that um, Melissa's just asking the question uh, is the, is it normal cardstock so what I use is I have got um, A5 cards that I sell in the shop. Uh, it's three dollars fifty with envelopes for a ten pack, um, and it is about a two ten flat white cardstock. I have found that this is just the nicest surface to be working on. Um, it is smooth. Um, yeah, just buy them all. Thanks, Tina. Um, <laughs> The, the cardstock is smooth. I use it in A4, sorry, A5 size and cut them in half. For me, that is what works. I think that it gives a, you know, I, I get, I get really um, funny about the cardstock that I use. Um, I don't love the Kaisercraft cardstock, but um, for stamping like this, I'll use that one because it's really nice white smooth, but it's a little bit thin for my liking. Um, for cards, for these backgrounds, I like something with a little bit more body. For scrapbooking, which like this afternoon when I do the page, uh, I'll be using marshmallow cardstock, which is bloody expensive, but it's a really nice cardstock. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit I'm a bit finicky about the cardstock, but I do, and everyone has their favourites, and I don't buy cheap stuff. I find that it's going to work quite nicely um, for, for inking if you, you know, use something that's a little bit nicer. So, all right. Um, so, I think I'm just about finished. I've created a couple of cards here, which I'll photograph. Um, so, just to recap, we used a combination of lots of different oxides, including the brand new Crackling Campfire. And for those of you who have just tuned in that didn't see what that colour looks like, let me swatch that for you. There we go. Crackling Campfire is looking pretty amazing and hopefully you can see the true colour of it in that light. If I add a few splatters of water over the top, let me show you how it looks. Um, and then you just do that. And it has oxidized. Um, but yeah, look, it's a beautiful color. It's a really, really, really nice color. Um, it's a, it's a lot different to all the others. It's got that real, um, deep orange base to it um, so we used blending tools on our background we used a combination of the paper rose blending brushes which are currently um, a two pack for fifteen dollars we also created some blending um, backgrounds using as you can see my very well used blending tool and also the new little mini tools that I have got in as well which was excellent for doing the rainbow card. Um, so you'll find those in the tool section online. Um, we used stencils um, as and then blended over the top of that. So that is using the Hamilton stencil, I think it's called, from Stencil Girl. We, I then, once I did this one, I had all the ink still sitting on the stencil. So I sprayed it with water and stamped straight onto the paper and I got the reverse image. Um, we blended some colors together. So we bought three colors together and then stenciled over the top with the crackling campfire. That also worked. Um, I used the crackling campfire with aged mahogany sitting over the top. I'll actually put a frame around that and put a little bit of a sentiment. I might even outline this image in a black pen. I think that would look quite nice. Um, this is the Crazy Quilts stencil that we used with Festive Berries and Aged Mahogany, which is a really lovely um, deep burgundy. We did 
what else have I got here? Um, a blended background using the refills and seeing how that worked with the refills direct to the brushes. Um, and then I stenciled over the top. Um, this one here I used, we did the, our two-tone background and I swiped the ink pad straight onto the paper and then blended it. And then I've stenciled over the top using the Natalie May, my own personal stencil that I've designed. Uh, this one we used the blending tool to do the top and then the bottom, brought the two colors together and then stamped over the top using the, st uh, the stamp that I've designed. And then finally, we did this one, which is the Stencil Girl Stencil. And um, we used the super tiny little baby tool to get into all of these little areas um, with a few different colors there before I turned that into a card. So thank you very much to everybody for tuning in. Um, and putting up with my waffling this afternoon as I've been a little bit seedy today, uh, self-inflicted seedy. So all the stamps and stencils are currently all 15% off online. Um, Paper Rose stencils, the brand spanking new ones that have only just come out. I love this one um, and I love the compass. I think that's gorgeous. Um, the Stencil Girl stencils are also 15% off. The stamps are all 15% off and all the paper collections and Lindy's products. So um, thank you very much for tuning in. I will take some photographs in a moment of my finished cards and then link to the products that we used um, in the comments section. So you can get straight through and have a look if you need to. Uh, and like I said, if you want to add to your cart or add, to, sorry, add to your previous purchases, just select no judgment at the checkout and I will add it to your previous order so you don't have to pay postage again. Um, I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Thank you very much again for tuning in and I will be back here at 4.30 doing another live today, another live Facebook, and I'm going to do a scrapbook page using Distress Oxide. So um, something a little bit more arty-farty I'm really not too sure 100% what I'm going to do yet, but we'll cross that hurdle when we get to it. Um, have a great day. Kiss your kids, wash your hands, go outside, get some vitamin D, and I look forward to chatting to you all soon. Thanks, guys.